So for those of you that are looking for a teardrop trailer but think you may need a bit more space, this may be the model for you. So this is Colorado Teardrop's Mount Massive Edition. And it's a family teardrop with two bunks. You can convert it to have a table with two sofas. And then you have the massive galley in the back here and the 15 inch KO2 tires. Meaning this thing is designed to get your family off grid, away from the crowds, so you can just enjoy your time out here. And you can obviously tell this teardrop is different. Uh, Woody from emergencyrv.org loaned this out to us, and this gives us the chance to tell his story. He's helping displaced families, him and his daughter, and they're doing incredible things, and I'm hoping maybe some of you will want to join him in that endeavor. So probably one of the most valued pieces of real estate on a teardrop is the amount of galley space you have in your kitchen, the prep space. East is four years old. East can stand up in there. Uh, let me show them East how big I am in here. As an adult male at 5'11", I can fit in this whole front galley. And then if I take my hat off, if I get in, look how deep this thing is. So on both of these sides, you can add a table here so when I'm cooking and prepping, I can keep throwing things up here so I can have more space. And then what I really like about this design is the hinge is designed to keep moving. So you can stick it here. I can move it all the way back to the fender. So I can be doing some prep here or family members so you can kind of spread out who's working in the kitchen area. So we just got out here and you guys know what this is. It is coming in fast. So we're gonna to try to get a meal in before this thing hits us, but I don't think it's gonna happen. This thing lights up like 4th of July. That's the best lighting I have ever seen for a galley. So you have a light up here, a light on the side, and a light on this other side. Excuse the mess, we have no system. This is our first night in it. And because they haven't installed a battery yet, I'm running this entire trailer off a little 300 watt rock pals. What's that, that above you? The, a window. Yeah, look at that massive moon roof. Can you see the trees out there? I love that. Uh-huh, I see them. And then the fantastic fan. Whoa! So you can see them in there, even under the rain. <laughs> so it's pretty late. About time for bed. Her head to the bottom here is the length of the queen bed. And then all this is extra beyond the queen for space. And then this bunk will come down and there's a bottom bunk and a top bunk. Was it easy for you to get up there, East? Did you get up there on your own? Uh-huh, I got it up there on my own. <laughs> and then how about Rye? Rye could fit back here. Uh-huh. Is that where it goes, Rye? Uh-huh. Oh, so we had bunks for two kids. <laughs> so before I hit the hay with the family, I thought this would be a good time. Oh, look at the size of that beetle. My goodness. Can you guys see that thing? So just like everything else in this camper, I'm finding this galley to be massive. And if you look at all this that I've thrown in here, I'm always talking about needing to be organized in a teardrop because there's not a lot of space. I'm not organized at all. And look at this, I have all the counters still open, tons of storage still available up here, and that's not counting any of the space below. I thought I was always a fan of cabinets, so I had a door to protect things but I find this system much easier to pull things in and out. And this lip held everything. So we were on really rough roads today. I accidentally had this pop open because I'm a newbie and I didn't understand the latching. Giant error on my part. I just went up, I don't know, for those of you who know, Magnolia Road um, near Roosevelt National Forest. It's like up. <laughs> I didn't have the handles on this right. The whole thing came up. You have a 12 volt outlet up there. These gas springs are kind of neat. I've never seen it like this. To get them down, you actually have to unlock a latch here. So there's, you know, in some crazy wind or something, this would never come down on you. So the portable water, to many of you, it's gonna sound crazy. You're thinking $20,000. It's actually 20,000 plus for this teardrop. To not have a sink, uh, to not have 
a water source that is pumped. So this one doesn't even have a grill. And as crazy as it sounds, until you get out here and do this style of camping, the simplicity is actually what you're kind of paying for in a trailer like this. So I'm gonna tear this thing down and uh, just get to bed with family and talk to you in the morning about a lot more features on this thing. Big beetle east. He has splinters of some kind. Mm -hmm. So right here you have your two inch receiver. This would be for carrying bike racks or an additional cargo rack to carry more gear. But with a trailer as big as this one, I don't think you're going to need that capability. And then underneath here, what you're hearing, this is a skid plate, an aluminum skid plate that runs the width of the trailer and from tip to tail. So this is definitely designed for getting you off road. If you were to um, high center on a rock or something, it's definitely going to protect any of that plywood underneath. And then down here, you're going to have a ton of extra space. So not only do you have the depth here, you have enough room here for two Yeti coolers. This is a slide out for if you had a fridge. So what you're looking at here is a torsion axle and it's rated to, I think, 3,500 pounds capacity. I think it's more than enough. And if you did want to upgrade this to a timber and suspension, I think they're capable of all that. I've seen these leaving the shop from people with all sorts of add-ons. So that's the beauty of a company like Colorado Teardrops. Even though they're making trailers at scale, they're still at a size that they can customize for you. So go on their website, you can see the huge list of customizations. It's wired up here for shore power and also wired for solar. And something I like to point out, oftentimes when these trailers say wired for solar, it doesn't mean you can just hook any solar panel to it because they don't have a charge controller inside. So like this one, this is wired for ZAMP solar, which is a solar panel that has the controller built into it. So we got the big knobby 15 inch KO2 tires here. Um, in terms of height, the clearance, all the trails we took yesterday, there were some big berms, some giant ruts. I never bottomed out at the axle, never bottomed out anywhere on the trailer. The Subaru Outback could use a bit of rise on the hitch because I did um, catch the tongue a little bit, but that's more of user error and, and getting that aligned. Because I picked this trailer up from Woody and not the dealership, I didn't have a chance to get a walkthrough of what comes on this stock and what is an upgrade. Um, but I'm pretty sure this tongue box here is an upgrade. Please join us in honoring CNN hero, Woody Faircloth. Hi, my name is Woody Faircloth. I'm the founder of emergencyrv.org. In 2018, my six-year-old daughter and I were watching coverage of the campfire where 50,000 people were displaced, over 100 people died, and it's just a tragic fire that destroyed the whole town. And it just occurred to me, what a no-brainer. There are RVs everywhere. Surely we can find one, uh, drive it to California, and give it to a family. So they had a place to stay for Thanksgiving. Um, I'd never been in an RV before, and one guy got back to us. He was selling it for about $18,000, but he said, hey, I love what you're doing, trying to help first responders who lost their homes. I'll sell it to you for $2,500. So we gave him cash, and we started driving to California. It took us three days to get there, but we ended up delivering it to a family of five who were sleeping in their car. Well, during our journey, the media heard about what we were doing and um, it really started a snowball. We started a nonprofit um, uh, where people can donate RVs to us. We can give them the full appraised value to write off on their taxes. And so everybody wins in that situation. And then we, we end up making improvements as necessary and we deliver it to someone who lost their home um, due to a natural disaster. You know, we, we found a, a, a family with a six-year-old who had cerebral palsy being fed on a feeding tube, living in a minivan, and that, that just shouldn't happen. Um, now we've delivered 88 RVs, but we were 2019 CNN Heroes of the Year. Um, we've been on the Steve Harvey Show, Kelly Clarkson, and then Amazon Prime has a show called Regular Heroes, and they did a profile on us during the pandemic, and Kelly Rowland from Destiny's Child at the end of the segment surprised us with a Colorado teardrop, and we're just thrilled to have that and super grateful. And then how do they get in contact with you? 
So if, if somebody wants to donate an RV to us, again, we give you the full appraised value for that RV if you're not using it or, or, or you know, we had, a, we had a gentleman who donated his, he checked his wife into a memory, Alzheimer memory care facility and he said, hey, all our memories are gone from this RV and we want somebody else to have them. So he donated it to us, we gave them the full appraised value. And the best way to reach us is at emergencyrv.org is our website. Emergencyrv, one word, dot org. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And you let me take her out. Really appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So we have our 10, 11 pound propane tank here. This is going to get you through an entire camping season without having to refill uh, in terms of gas stove and cooking. And then it looks like Amazon was really nice here to Woody when they built this for him. They put on an on-demand hot water heater. And then you'll notice up here they have a really robust roof rack. Looks like it's lined with some sort of lining like armadillo or rhino liner. And then as you can see on the back side, uh, they added a 23-0 batwing awning for Woody. Okay, I'm gonna keep this real for you guys and not clean it up. I'm just gonna show you as is. So down here you have a tiny shelf, maybe four to five inches deep. This is going to hold your cell phones, your water at night, things like that. You can also plug into 12 volt and run it to this shelf. Up here you have two large open shelving sections. And so you can pull this out, shove a like a duffel bag up there, and then in transport you would just put this back up so it won't come out. I'm finding I actually like this open shelving system. Maybe even preferring it over a cabinet or a sliding door. Um, but there's um, give and take with anything. And so the give is that it's giving you all this extra open space. It's easy to move things in here. Easier to grab things throughout the day. The take is it's taking away that kind of clean, kempt look. So no longer is this stuff hidden behind a door or a cabinet, it's out in the open. So to me, it kind of has a bunk house feel and you're gonna have to decide if that's what you want. Is this just a place to sleep and feel like a bunk house or do you need those kind of clean lines um, so you feel kind of like a zen little space? So setting up a bed and table like this usually takes a lot of time. I was able to do this really quick because the shelving system here, because it's open, I could just throw the bedding up here. And this one's neat compared to others I've seen because it gives you two bench seats. Your bed turns into a bench seat here, and then the wood turns into a bench seat. So all of this when not in the table use is storage. So you get all this storage under your bed. Same thing back here, this is all storage that you can pull up. And then under this section is storage as well. 